Good morning, everybody. My name is Morningstar Pinto. I'm a Director of Outreach and Engagement with the Ministry of Jobs, Economic Recovery and Innovation. And you are attending the Small and Medium-Sized Business Recovery Grant Program Information Session. Just to note that this uh, session is being recorded. Uh, next slide, please. So a quick introduction, I've introduced myself. I'm gonna pass it over to John just to say hello and introduce himself. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining today. Um, my name is John Cruz. I am the manager of finance for trade and industry development, also with Ministry of Jobs and Economic Recovery. Um, Morningstar and I have been um, asked to support uh, Stronger BC, in particular, the small and medium-sized business recovery grant program. And um, yeah, welcome. Welcome everyone. Thanks, John. So just a quick overview of the agenda. I'll do an acknowledgement. We're gonna talk about a few of the program improvements. Uh, we're gonna go through a bit of level setting with the program and the funding. We're gonna talk about the process. Uh, we're gonna give you a few tips and then we're gonna make time for questions and answers. Next slide, please. So the webinar today is being delivered from downtown Victoria, BC. So we are acknowledging the Lekwungen speaking people for their continued stewardship of the land and for welcoming us as visitors on their traditional territories. And you'll see up on your screen, uh, I encourage you to check out the signs of Lekwungen project and all of the information on the Songhees Nation website if you're interested in seeing um, the history of First Nations in our area. Next slide, please. So new improvements to the program. Um, just to let everybody know that there is a little bit of a, a time gap in between um, when I say next slide and when the slide actually comes onto the screen. So um, I, might, I might pause for what seems like a long time, but uh, we're just gonna give the technology a chance to um, catch up with us. So uh, I'm not sure if, if everybody on the call has heard, but uh, on March 4th, we were able to announce some improvements to the program. So the program has now been extended until August 31st, 2021, or until all of the funds are fully expended. So whichever comes first. Uh, you can now get help, uh, or sorry, businesses only need to show a 30% revenue loss uh, from March 2020 to now when compared to the same month period in 2019. So that's down from 70%. So that's a big jump. Uh, we heard from a lot of folks, a lot of businesses, a lot of industry representatives that the 70% was very prohibitive. Uh, so we've made an adjustment. And then the uh, third change is that you can now get help preparing a complete application package from start to finish. So if you need help gathering documents, uh, if you need help taking a look at the application page, you do need to apply on your own, but you can have the help of the service provider through that, as well as help with the uh, recovery plan. Uh, and if you, apply, if you apply to the program before March 4th, um, please know that you don't need to submit uh, a new application. We have adjudicators that are going to be taking a look at all of the applications that are in review to make sure that we haven't missed anybody and that uh, nobody gets left behind with these changes. Next slide, please. So a quick overview about the program. Um, the program was launched on September 17th. Changes that were then made in December and then we have the changes in March again. Uh, eligible businesses can receive up to $30,000 um, depending on uh, depending on how many, uh, how much money they made in 2019 before the, before the uh, pandemic hit, and depending on um, number of staff if you're looking to um, get the eligible tourism-related uh, business top up. Um, next slide, please. So here's a little overview of the eligible funding. So you'll see that the base grant amount is based on your pre-COVID annual revenue. Um, so that's on the, the left side of your screen. And then on the right side of your screen, the tourism top up is based on the number of pre-COVID uh, resident, BC resident employees that you employed. So this shows you a bit of an overview of, of what you can expect if you're eligible and you do receive the grant. Next slide, please. So two-step process. So the program essentially has two steps. 
Um, before you start with step one, though, I encourage you, we encourage you to visit gov.bc.ca forward slash business recovery grant to learn how the program works, to take a look at uh, the document checklist, to make sure you meet all of the eligibility requirements and to see what you need to apply. Uh, then you're ready for step one. So step one is start your application. This is also now where folks can reach out uh, for help preparing a complete application package. So essentially you can click start your application, you can do the first page, and then you can take your application number uh, and you can reach out um, to us uh, through Small Business BC to get matched with a service provider who can help you with things like um, language interpretation, gathering document, uh, gathering the documents that you need to uh, submit a complete application, etc. Um, so once you've submitted your application and all your documents, um, government then reviews to make sure that you're eligible and they will reach out. Uh, we will reach out if we have any questions or if you need more information. And then once eligibility is confirmed, we uh, you move on to step two, which is completing a recovery plan. So uh, the recovery plan is around four pages. As John likes to say, two pages are are pretty much just um, the the uh, all the disclaimers and the the check marks to make sure that we've got ourselves covered. Uh, so the the recovery plan is essentially um, the actions that you are going to be taking or have taken um, to pivot your business to help support your business through uh, the pandemic. So then after we receive your recovery plan. Um, the whole package is then reviewed, and if you're eligible, that's when a decision is made about your grant. So I'm gonna pass it on to John, if we can uh, get the next slide going, and John's gonna chat a little bit uh, about steps, uh, step one and tips for success. Great, thank you, Morningstar, <clears throat> excuse me. So yeah, we'll talk a little bit about our eligibility criteria and um, the information that we seek in, in terms of required documentation to help us determine um, your eligibility. Um, so, as you can see on the screen here, um, it's really important that folks go to our website, take a look at the criteria. There's a document checklist that you can download. Take it along if you're seeking for some support. Um, your accountant or bookkeeper can help provide that information, or you can be matched up with someone, that, as Morningstar mentioned, through Small Business BC to really help um, coordinate the, the compilation of all this information. The one thing I'll mention um, while we're asking for the next slide to come up, please. Um, is that the information we're asking for exists, already exists. Um, if you file your taxes, you're current with your taxes. Um, if you're, you have payroll, you're filing your payroll monthly, quarterly, that stuff already exists. So we're only asking for stuff that you should be able to compile quite easily if obviously understanding that folks are particularly small and medium sized businesses, um, you know, they're just trying to, uh, operate a business, be, uh, maybe maybe it's their dream, right? And it's the last thing they wanna be doing is the bookkeeping. So, um, but, but like I said, we, we anticipate that the information that we're asking for um, is easy to gather because as long as you've been filing your taxes and filing your payroll, um, it's easy to pull together. So as you can see on your screen now, we have a document checklist. Again, um, at the top of your uh, right side of your screen, you can see our website, gov.bc.ca forward slash business recovery grant. Um, Ideally, there's, well, not ideally, there's, there are two types of um, organizations. It'll be unincorporated businesses or incorporated businesses. A lot of the information we seek is, is similar in terms of um, tax returns, notices of, notices of assessment, payroll information, but I, I'll go through each piece so people understand, particularly for small um, businesses like sole proprietorships and partnerships. Um, we're asking for your T1 tax return, your notice of assessment, and in particular, the T2125, which is your statement of business or professional activities, and that will ind indicate to us your operating income. Um, we're also looking for payroll information if you do have staff or contracted staff, <coughs> excuse me again, um, your T4 statement of remuneration or your PD-70 um, payroll filing or payroll or check lens. Um, the one thing that may not exist and people may have to uh, put something, to get something together for us is a bit of a summary of the monthly revenue. So we're looking for actual monthly revenue year over year. So to determine your um, the impact of COVID on your business, in particular, the revenue loss. Um, we're looking for one particular, any one particular month. So let's take the example of April. If April, 2020, you had, um, let's say $50,000 50, 50, of gross revenue, we compare that to your April, 2019. And if you had $100,000 of gross revenue there, 
then you would have demonstrated a 50% loss and you would be eligible for that criteria. Well, um, I'll, I'll ask you to focus on this, the right side of your screen here for incorporated businesses, a little bit more different because incorporated businesses have a, a, some statutory filings that are required particular to their financial statements. Um, and again, this program is really geared towards um, uh, BC residents and BC resident ownership. And so we do wanna recognize that um, folks need to demonstrate that the majority shareholder or the significant shareholder, um, no, no, no other shareholder has um, controlling interest. So we do ask for a central securities register or your schedule 50 shareholder information just to determine that the businesses that we want to support are owned by BC residents. And then again, as I said, in terms of statutory filings regarding balance sheets, income statements, and if you, if available, the statement of cash flows. As you can see on the screen here, we, again, we give you a little bit of a template or sample of the information we need in terms of your actual monthly revenue. And then if you go a little bit further down your page here, uh, notice of assessment or uh, TQ tax return. And then same with payroll documents. Um, we're looking in particular for payroll, we're looking for information just prior to COVID, just to identify the, the impact of, that it has had on um, the workforce. So if you provide um, payroll documents from September 1st, 2019 to to the date of your application, then that should be sufficient. Okay, next slide, please. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit of some of the changes that have been recently announced and some of the changes that were announced also in December. The minister was very, very keen to get some feedback from the business community and from staff on this program just to, to understand really what, what was the challenges of the program and, and to make the program as inclusive as possible. Um, one of those big changes that were announced that we opened it up to sole proprietorships and partnerships. So folks that are, let's, let's take for example, some of the mom and pops that don't have staff and are running the business and doing everything under the, under the sun, um, those folks are now eligible for this program. We have uh, lowered the requirement for how long a business needed to be in operation. It used to be three years, it is now only 18 months from the date of your application. So if you apply today, then you should be eligible from, I guess it would be, it's March now, so it's October uh, 2019. Um, you need to only show a 30% revenue loss for the same one month period, um, year over year, so from 2020 uh, compared to 2019. And also, um, as you know, this program was announced um, back in September 17th, I can't believe it, Morningstar, we've been at this for seven months. Um, but yes, the program was announced on uh, September 17th. So any um, expenses or actions that you've um, undertaken um, related to your recovery can be retroactively um, applied against your recovery plan. Um, so that's an important piece there. Um, we recognize that folks could not wait for, for government to, to set up their programs to get the support out there. And they had to make, their, make some hard choices to um, pivot their business um, access new revenue streams, make their business more um, um, profitable um, from a bottom line perspective to just make make it through, right? Like the rest of us, just to get through pandemic. So if you have incurred costs related to your recovery already um, from 17th, September 17th forward, then those, um, those costs can be applied to this um, recovery program. All right, next slide, please. All right, so um, one change that I really want to um, focus on as well is the Minister of Tourism was very keen to support our program and, and provide some added um, funding to the program related to tourism. And we have adjusted our program to have a much more broad-based um, application or definition of tourism. So it's really folks that are, are traveling outside of their normal environment. So it's not just international travelers, it's not just domestic travelers in Canada. It could be folks like you and me, um, I live in Coquitlam, and if I travel to the island, or if I travel to Kelowna, or I travel to Vancouver, I, that is outside of my normal environment, and and those municipalities are um, entertaining me as a as a tourist. So um, it makes it a lot more broad. It's a trust based um, definition of it. We just ask for folks to declare that they are um, have a significant portion of their business is tourism related. All right, so we can go to the next slide, please. And I'll hand it back over to Morningstar, who will take us through recovery plans. So you're in good sense here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John. Okay, so 
when we get to recovery plans, step two, uh, you have a few options um, to, to, I would say, start and complete this process. So now, if a business hasn't been matched with a professional service provider in stage one, they can do so now, um, though it is not a requirement. So I'll just go over this a little bit. So you can get matched with a small business BC qualified service provider, and that service provider will get up to $2,000 um, to help support your process. Uh, you can also use your own professional service provider. If, you, if they would like to get paid through um, Small Business BC, they will need to register. And Small Business BC essentially goes um, to their, uh, their blanket organization to check in and make sure that they're in good standing. Um, so you'll see on the right-hand side of your screen that the, a professional service provider to be paid uh, through this uh, program needs to be a certified bookkeeper that's in good standing with their organization either the CPB of Canada or the Canadian Institute of Bookkeeping. Uh, they can also be a certified professional financial planner, a practicing lawyer in good standing with the Law Society of BC, or a chartered professional accountant in good standing with CPA of BC. Um, and then the, the third uh, process is you can develop a recovery plan on your own or using a service provider without the small business BC qualification. So um, with that, there is no uh, up to $2,000 for the service provider, but the process can be much faster. So just like with everything, there are pros and cons to both of these, right? If you need extra help, whether that be um, gathering documentation or uh, putting together, having a chat about the actions that you're considering putting into your recovery plan, and you really want to bounce your ideas off of somebody who works in the business and can take a look at maybe your financial situation or your long-term plan and say, yeah, this totally aligns. Um, it's a really great opportunity to get the help that you need. Uh, if you know what you need, you're very clear on where you want to go and you don't feel like you want to take the time uh, to be connected with a professional service provider, you can develop a recovery plan on your own. Um, it's down. You can download it off of uh, the program webpage. It's around four pages, as we mentioned earlier. And essentially, um, what adjudicators are looking for is uh, what is the action you're going to take, how much does it cost, and uh, how long do you think it's going to take you to do this? Because really, we're looking for things that are actionable. Um, we're not looking at long-term actions. We're we're looking at what you what you've done um, past September 17th, or what you're planning on doing in let let's say the next nine months. Um, so we want it to be something that gets you through and helps you pivot through the pandemic. Uh, anything to add on that, John? No, it's it's a good point. Um, what we're really looking for is, um, in terms of rec recovery action items, is that it's reasonable and it's implementable, right? We want to know how these funds will will support your recovery and how it will support your community. Okay. Next slide, please. Uh, so using the grant funding. So here are uh, some sample actions. So you can see here that we've got um, both uh, some some pieces that happened in, in the future um, and some of the stuff that we could be doing in the past. So this is, except for the colors, this is actually how it looks in the action plan. Um, so if you installed plexiglass, or if you're planning on installing plexiglass barriers, you think it's gonna take a couple of weeks and you, you've you been told it's gonna cost this much, you know, 5,000 and change, you put that in there. Um, if you need to pay some of your rent, um understanding that we want to cover rent we recognize that this is important and we can help cover a couple of months what we don't want to see is your whole action plan is just covering rent right because that's not going to show us that you're uh, moving forward on your business and pivoting and and looking for new ways to reach customers um, that's a good point morningstar sorry to cut in there um no, this no. is a recovery plan we want to make sure that folks are set up to to sort of be successful between you know the next six to nine months in terms of how they're accessing and pivoting their business um, but at the same time as Morningstar said the Minister of Finance was clear that she wanted to include um, some funding here a portion of the funding to to meet some of those demands that folks have in terms of their fixed and um, costs like like rent and property taxes and um, utilities and whatnot but definitely it's it's really geared towards your recovery and what can you do to 
make it safe for your staff, make it safe for your customers, and 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 like I said, pivot to um, different revenue streams. Absolutely. Thanks, John. So you can see there are a couple of uh, examples up on the screen, supporting your business moving online, uh, diversifying your business to reach new customers, purchasing equipment or improving on uh, the way you're presenting your goods and services. A uh, couple of things that have come up in the past few days, um, we have some folks who are owner operators of their own taxis that are uh, wondering how this um, program uh, will work for them. One thing is, if you are a taxi owner operator, um, you can apply under the program. You need to have your own business, so you need to you need to be registered with BC Registries to show your own business number. You don't actually apply uh, using the blanket taxi company that you are uh, working for. Um, another thing that's come up is, can we use this for wages? And this is an interesting conversation, right? Um, this isn't about sustaining the employees that you already have. So in, in the case of just paying, paying your employees wages, no. Uh, if you want to uh, hire a contractor for six months to help with marketing, if you wanna um, bring somebody in to help pivot your business, uh, the answer is yes. So John, do you wanna speak a little more to that piece? Sure, if, if you're, if you're gonna, um... It's a good point, and thanks for bringing that up, Morningstar. Uh, if you want to hire someone that's going to help pivot your business or access marketing or social media, some of the things that you can't do on your own or don't have the time to do your own, then definitely this this will help you access new markets or new revenue streams or make your business more um, uh, more efficient and and more profitable, right? So those those costs could be included in the recovery plan. Um, we recognize that. Uh, one of the significant costs of, for any business are our wages. It's like 80-20 in terms of uh, human resource costs, and we recognize that. But there are other programs, particularly the wage subsidy, that are available for those type of expenses. Thanks, John. So, and again, these are some sample actions, but this is not inclusive. You are in the dreaming and planning and driving uh, of these actions. And so we expect that uh, you as a business owners have the best idea how to make your business successful in the coming months. Uh, and just a reminder that you can retroactively claim actions in your recovery plan uh, back until September 17th. Uh, so if you have put done any work from September 17th on, you can claim that in your action plan. Uh, next slide, please. So just a reminder before we get to questions that uh, this is a non-repayable grant, not a loan. So you do not have to pay this money back uh, unless it turns out that you use the money to take a trip somewhere instead of actually, you know, putting it back into your business, which we don't assume you're going to do. Uh, businesses that applied before the changes, you do not need to resubmit an application. Um, we have adjudicators who will be reviewing under the new program criteria. Uh, and then a reminder that the program now runs until August 31st of this year or until funds are fully subscribed, whichever comes first. So we encourage you to get your application in uh, because, um, you know, we we expect that the, the program will be um, fully subscribed. Uh, and then if you need any, any help or tips or uh, tricks or anything like that, you can, um, there's a couple ways you can go about doing that on our uh, gov.bc.ca forward slash recovery grant program webpage. Um, we have our contact information, both uh, a hotline that you can call, as well as uh, some information, uh, the email, the email address, and then you can also subscribe to updates. Um, there's a little box on the screen that will allow you to put in your email address. And then every time uh, we do make changes to the website of significance, you will be notified so that you can keep up to date. Um, and then just a reminder that translation and, and interpretation supports are available. I believe we have uh, the main web page translated into nine different languages. If that language doesn't work, um, you can reach out to that hotline that we've called, and we do have supports available for both interpretation and translation services, as well as service providers that can help you in the language of your choice. So that's about it. Uh, John, any last any last pieces, or should we get to questions? No, I think that's it. We pretty much covered the, the program, the eligibility, and, and what we need to verify your eligibility. So yeah, let's get us into some questions. 
Great, great. Thanks. There has been quite a few questions that have come in, so I'm not sure if we'll get to all of them, but um, if, if we don't, then we'll, we do have the, the additional resources that you can reach out to. Um, the first question comes, if I've made a mistake on my application and missed a document, how do I go about amending that? Uh, okay, um, good question. Um, once your file has been submitted, we we take that file into our system and get some assigned to an adjudicator. They will reach out to you about missing documentation um, and any information that they have. If, and like I said, if you refer to our document checklist and um, are able to submit that, it does help in terms of um, speeding up the process. And, and and if we do find that all the information we need is already there, we, we can offer a bit of a fast track so folks can, can get to the recovery plan right away and not have to um, slow the process down. But if you have missed some information, um, you'll you'll have to you can either send them a note into our um, helpline or our, our help desk, or you can uh, wait for your adjudicator to reach out for subsequent information. So just to just to clarify, on the screen, business recovery grant program at gov.bc.ca. Um, so if you have realized and you want to you want to be proactive and you've realized you've missed a document, you can reach out to that email address, and that's the way to contact contact the team. I will just say, don't send any of those documentations into that email address. Um, just Absolutely. send an email and yeah. um, they'll let you know, we can link you up with a document uploader and you can add that directly to your file that way. Absolutely, um, just for privacy concerns, we just don't want folks to be sending th folks through uh, stuff through email. We want them to use our secure document uploader. Thanks. Thanks, Jessica. Um, for the revenue, monthly revenue, do we need to include any subsidies or rent sub wage or rent subsidies that we've received um, for 2020? No, um, we're only concerned about your business's operations and uh, we don't necessarily take into account um, any support you received elsewhere. Perfect. There's a couple of questions of just about the professional help for the recovery fund and how the how that is paid for. So. Uh, is the money that two thousand dollars, or the amount of money that you um, get help with, is that taken off of your total grant amount? No. So that is a separate process. Uh, it is paid directly to the service provider through Small Business BC, who is partnering to deliver this side of the program with us. Uh, so it does not affect your grant at all. Okay. And if I was on, if I'm, if I get help from a professional service provider, but I'm, oh, I'm unsuccessful in receiving the grant, will I have to pay back the cost of the service provider? Nope. No, as long as, as long as you, as long as they are registered with Small Business BC, uh, and and they have, they have um, a relationship with Small Business BC and have been vetted. Uh, government, at this point, we understand um, that not everybody may be eligible and we want to make sure that everybody gets the best chance at getting this grant as possible. Anything to add to that, John? No, that's exactly the point. Um, we know that it's a, it can be a challenge preparing all this documentation or collating that information for us. And so we want to provide that support um, to folks. Um, so yes, you, could, um, you will not be responsible for those costs um, incurred for that type of support. And then there's just a, comp uh, a question, is this grant recovery program suitable for t trade companies, exact example, electricians or welders, welding companies that have suffered the revenue loss? Well, I don't see why any um, registered business couldn't apply for this um, as long as they meet all of our eligib eligibility criteria. So I, I don't want to speak to this particular industry, but I don't see why they wouldn't be able to apply. And John, so I'll can point, oh, sorry, I'll just point to folks that you know the criteria is pretty clear. We want to make sure that we're supporting businesses in BC that are owned by BC residents, that we're protecting as much as we can uh, BC resident um, employment and jobs, and and really just demonstrating the impact of COVID on those businesses. Okay, sorry, Jessica, to cut you off there. No, no, that's perfect. Okay, and there's just a number of people asking for clarification on just how that 30% revenue is calculated and um how if, if it's one month or many months that are required for that 30 percent drop great question so in on our website there is a, a required document checklist and you'll see there's a sampled um table it's really just two columns that say here's the the month of april as my i alluded to earlier um this is my gross revenue for april 2020 it was thirty thousand dollars and then you'll have a uh, um april of the prior year 2019 so we're just looking for the impact uh, year over year for a particular month. 
one month. And it just needs to be one month. So any time from March 2020 on, if you can show a 30% loss year over year, you are eligible. As long as you meet the other criteria, obviously. <laughs> yeah. and, and the website does say compared to 2019, but if I was going to compare January 2021 or February 2021 to 2020. So it's, it's from March 2020 forward. So we'll apply that. Um, to the previous year. Obviously, the impact of COVID is, is within 2020 and that's the, the, mo the, the most um, strongest indicator of revenue loss, but we recognize that because the, the program has been extended that you could apply it to, theoretically to um, January 2021 versus January 2020, so that would be fine. The term pivot came up a number of times in the presentation. Can you explain what you mean by pivoting a business? Sure. sure. Uh, why don't I, I take a crack and then I'll let John uh, okay. correct anything I've said wrong. Um, so let's say that I am uh, a business that uh, to this point, let's say I'm in Victoria and I'm a coffee shop that, you know, relies a lot on the tourists coming in from the ferries and, and, and visiting. Um, and I, uh, I sell a bunch of baked goods and I sell coffee. Um, and I all of a sudden realize, holy smokes, I'm not getting the people in the door. What can I do differently? Uh, maybe I can start um, delivering my coffee. Maybe I can uh, add new products. Uh, maybe I can, maybe I need a, a website and I need to start marketing some of the products that I have. Um, so when we say pivot, it's, it's like how, how do you take what you have uh, and apply it to a different customer base than maybe you had thought of before. So um, there's a good example of a, a group that just got a, a grant um, in, a, in a ski community. They were used to um, promoting travel like luxury travel packages to international travelers well they don't have international travelers now um so they are pivoting their business by um creating uh luxury travel packages for folks in bc so they're looking more at the local market and they're looking at a different client base than they they had ever thought that they would uh, connect with john anything to add to that one yeah, I, what I'll say is that in terms of the word pivot, I, I think, <clears throat> for lack of a better term, it's really how are you going to um, sustain your profitability? Um, how are you going to continue to um, keep your staff and, and pay for those operational expenses, right? So does it mean that you expand revenue and, and access new markets, or does it mean you make your business more efficient? Do you, do you uh, uh, adjust your footprint so that you can access more more um, customer base um, in a social distance environment. Um, I'll give you one example that we got that was one of my favorites um, over the seven months that Morningstar and I have been working on this for Jessica as well. Um, we had a tour company. Uh, I'll try to be as, uh, I won't share any personal identifying information, but they, they found that their, their client base was always asking to stop to buy um, supplements unrelated to the work that they do. And so they, they said, well, this is what they're looking for. So they expanded their website to also offer supplements because that's what those customers were looking for. And they found that when they did that and accessing these new markets that they can provide that and sustain themselves at least until borders open and we have more um, folks coming in back into our province. And and that's, that's what we mean by pivot. We don't necessarily mean a, a complete 180 degree shift. We, we understand that people, you know, you're doing, you're, you're, you're living the dream about entrepreneurship and, and creating this business that you, it's, it's hard to pivot. I understand that. I'm an accountant by trade. I can't just become a non-accountant. So I can pivot this, this much. And it's just the degree that you, you shift your business to access these, these new markets or new, um, uh, a new demand that could be out there, or, or maybe it is 180 degree shift, who knows, right? But, uh, but yeah, just how do you access and how do, how does this program help to, to provide that ability to make that access to other um, streams. Hope that helps answer that question. Great. Um, can the recovery, can you include in your recovery plan infrastructure costs, for example, if we're looking to build a farm stand for our business? Yeah, I don't see, the, the only problem that I see with that, and it's not really a problem, because that would definitely access um, a new revenue stream by having a, uh, 
a new sort of let's call it storefront um, and that would definitely be something that could expand your um, revenue potential. Um, I only say that this is a one-time grant funding and it doesn't have the ability to have a, a more lasting ability to fund sort of capital projects. So just being a word of caution that this is a one-time only grant. It's not a loan, it's non-repayable, but it is one-time only. Yeah, and I, and I might add to that, um, you know, so you think about the, you, you think about the, the size and the time it takes. So a farm stand, uh, a new patio, things like that, uh, are probably um, within reach within a shorter period of time and don't cost a huge amount of money, which is very different than like, I'm going to add on a big chunk to my building or I'm going to build a new building or something like that. Obviously, there's not enough funding to do to build a new building anyways. But, you know, like think of scale when you're when you're thinking of approach. OK. And one of the eligibility criteria is to show positive, positive cash flow in the past year. Can you clarify what uh, adjudicators are looking for when they're um, verifying this in an application? Great question. Um, what we're looking for there is to demonstrate operational um, cash flow to determine that businesses are viable in the short term, that they can meet their um, short term obligations like uh, salaries and uh, rent and, and kind of the stuff that you and I would pay for typically in terms of um, your day-to-day -day expenses. So just making sure that businesses are viable in the short term, operational. <laughs> I feel like I just add words at the end. <laughs> <laughs> operational cash flow is what we're looking at. Okay. And are nonprofits avail um, able to apply for this grant? Good question. We get it every single call. Morningstar have, and I have been on a, a roadshow of this program for the last, I guess, three or four months. And we've been in every corner of the province and we get this question every single time. And unfortunately, um, as it states on our website, this is not open to not-for-profit organizations. We do recognize that there are other programs um, available to those uh, types of organizations, particularly registered charities, but we do recognize this as a bit of a gap in, in some of the support that is out there for not-for-profits. And we consistently bring this message back to our executive because we get the same question every single call and they, they hear us and I won't speak on behalf of government in terms of policy decisions, but um, they're aware that there is a potential gap for those folks and we want to hope that uh, we can provide um, some supports out there. I, I think Morristar can speak to that a little bit as well. Yeah, I would agree, John. Um, you know, I think government is listening and they're recognizing that this uh, was a bit of a blind spot uh, and they are looking, you know, our next budget is coming out April 20th, I believe. And I know that um, I know that the next budget is is being looked at with how can you know, how can we make uh, more resources available for not for profits? Um, that being said, uh, our small business branch within our ministry does have a great list of uh, resources that they update regularly uh, for not-for-profits. Um, so if you'd like to email that that email on your screen, business recovery grant program at gov.bc.ca um, and request uh, additional information for not-for-profits, we'd be happy to share that with you as well. And are, are businesses required to have st any have staff? Um, if it's an incorporated or sole proprietorship with no other employees, would they still be eligible for this grant? Yes, you're not required to have employees. You can have zero up to 149. Approximately how long does it take for applications to be reviewed and processed in the program? Well, that's all dependent there. That's a good question. It's, it's all dependent. And that's why we focus a lot of this presentation on the eligibility criteria and the the, uh, required document checklist because we do find that we're still seeing about 50% of the um, applications that come in are lacking some type of supporting documentation and I, I just want to emphasize that we believe that the information is well I understand it can be a bit of a challenge I'm it's easy for me to stand on the soapbox and be an accountant and say yeah I know what all these acronyms stand for and what these documents look like I, I can see them I see them in my sleep but uh, I, I know for some folks it's a challenge to get that um, we just say that if, if you can get the information to us, it does um, speed up the process. And we do, we do find for the other 50% that do provide all of the information, we can offer something that's called a bit of a fast track mm -hmm. to help speed up the process because the recovery plan itself is really simple. At least I believe it used to be 21 pages. It's now four 
as Morningstar likes to call it. I think it's two. <laughs> we have a constant argument about what's the It's really a page and a half of information that we need. And then the other page, two pages are about declaration and signing, right? It's really about uh, the action items you can take towards your recovery, if they're implementable and the, the timelines and, and the cost, right? So if we get all the information you can get to us, it does speed up the time. And if you prepare your own recovery plan, that also saves some time. So that, that can really help in the process. And, and as far as uh, the amount of time it takes right now, I'd say it's around six to eight weeks. Uh, and I know that sounds like a lot of time, but um, you know, with with uh, with the steps and with the adjudication process and with the back and forth, uh, that's what we're seeing is around six to eight weeks. And we are trying to make that, you know, sp speed up the process. Uh, I believe we are constantly. Um, you know, bringing on more staff to tr to keep up and to make sure that we get things to you as quickly as possible. That's right. Part, part of the thing is that there is quite the influx of, of applications because Morningstar and I have been uh, doing, our job. With, doing our job and engaging with um, stakeholders to make sure that they are aware of our program. So <laughs> there are some, um, uh, a lot of um, applications to be going through and making sure that we are adjudicating um, consistently and fairly to, to get that support out there, but at the same time, um, uh, finance the the, um, the amount of time for processing of all these payments can, can put some uh, delays in the whole process. So it's about, um, like you mentioned, uh, Marcia mentioned 68 weeks. For funding amounts, are the funding amounts set based on those um, uh, pre-COVID revenues and the employee amounts, or do they depend on the information that you submit in your recovery plan? I uh, know it's it's set based on those criteria. And will this uh, presentation and webinar be available anywhere if people want to come back and look at it after the session? Yes. yes. Uh, so okay. <laughs> so we will have um, Jessica who just asked the question. Uh, work her magic and we will have a recording available as well as the PDF of um, of the presentation online in the coming week or so and that'll be at our uh, the, at the web page listed on your screen gov.bc.ca forward slash business recovery grant. Great. So we're just about out of time there. So maybe I'll pass it back to you. We weren't able to answer all the questions. So if, if you still have some, um, you can definitely email or call. There's people, agents available from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. ready to answer your questions at that phone number on the screen. And I'll hand it back to Morningstar and John to give any last uh, final advice for anyone wanting to submit an application. Thank you, Jessica. What, I, what I'll say is that um, we encourage folks to look at the, look onto our website, website um, review the criteria to see if they believe they're eligible, um, download the checklist, either bring that to their um, bookkeeper, accountant, lawyer, um, financial planner, um, prepare that documentation, and um, we look forward to having folks apply for the program. Yeah, and I'll close off just by encouraging everybody to apply. And if you have any questions, to use the contact information below. Um, we're really jazzed that the program has been extended and that we were able to get some more changes through the door. You know, I think it's um, it's great that we're able, as government, uh, to make these changes so quickly and to respond to what's happening in the province. And, uh, you know, we recognize that this is a challenging time for businesses throughout BC and for people in general. And, and um, so we're with you and we're here to help. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. Thanks, everybody.